In May, Northeast fishermen enjoy an embarrassment of angling riches. The big stripers are back, fluke season is open, there's rumors of weak fish, and the blue fish are in. Sometimes the toughest part about leaving the harbor on a day in May is deciding exactly which species you want to fish for. Chris, we're at like the fork in the road right now coming out of Falmouth Harbor. We could run right. You and Kevin had some bass and blues. I would love to check out to the left, run down to the flats off Katua, Papanasset, where there's been a good number of big bluefish. We had some southwest wind last night. That's like the bluefish wind on the south side here. What do you think? Ah, uh, that's a great call. You make every reason for us to go to Katua. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you hole. guys did some stuff there. And Let's no head to his hole. No, no, you know what? I'm gonna go with Jimmy. It usually never pans out, <laughs> ever. It's a win-win for Chris. It's a win-win. I get to tour to him the rest we, of the day. You either catch a bunch of fish or we get to say, oh, we get to say Jimmy, I had I no idea. All right, look, we're, we're gonna shoot down a Katuit. I have this sick feeling that everything's gone where that boat just went. But that's what friends do for each other. They humor them? They humor. <laughs> Blues were the fish that made me fall in love with saltwater fishing. They're strong, aggressive, and are just mysterious enough that they never get boring. On this trip, I'm hoping to sight cast a cruising bluefish with my fly rod, but it's early enough in the season that'll take them any way I can get them. Bluefish are a bit of a mysterious fish. They're cyclical, not to the same level as, as weak fish are, where they have uh, high abundance and then disappear for years, but they will they'll thin out and they used to explain that, the, the scarcity and abundance of bluefish by saying they had a, a transatlantic migration that the whole school, they, if there were no bluefish on this side of the Atlantic, they, the theory was that they were all over in Africa and the Mediterranean and you just have to wait for the mi migration to come back around. I don't think that's necessarily the case, but uh, it was always kind of fun to speculate. Back in the day, Jimmy, you, you just, you couldn't get away from them, you know? And now, in many ways, they're coveted because they're, 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 you know, they don't, they're not here in abundance anymore. This has been the first season in, in quite a while where, where I've heard people actually complaining about bluefish. And it, it kind of, uh, that was like a tradition. You know, if you were targeting striped bass, you were complaining about the blues chopping up your soft plastics, chopping up your eels. It doesn't feel fishy. I like the wind. I like the wind direction. Oh, there we go. You see it? No. I thought. Just blew up on it. Little schooly Jimbo? I, I don't know. I would assume bluefish. Oh, yeah, he's still, he's still there. If somebody had a fly rod ready. <laughs> oh, look at them all. Look at them all. Yeah, big pack of them. Chris. Blues? Throw one of the plastics real erratic. Now, Here's another example. I don't know, this is what they were doing to me the other day on shore, where they were chasing the top water. They would splash on it, swirl on it, but they wouldn't commit to it. And I don't know if it was tidal, if it was the wind direction, if it wasn't quite what they were looking for. Oh, come on, there we go, there we go, I got him. Jimmy, never doubted you for a minute. Oh. Oh yeah, big, nice size bluefish. He's got a few followers. All right, I got to rig up a fly rod, Chris, because we've right, got him. You fight him, I'll go ahead and grab the fly rod. You have a fly on any of these yet? No, no, not yet. Oh. Bluefish or bass? No, big, beautiful bluefish, Chris. No, oh! <laughs> they jump, they fight like crazy, they run oh, in crazy. big schools. right there, just spooked them. They are incredible fish. The end game's <laughs> not fun. Oh, that's a good size one too. All right, let me give you a hand, Jimmy. Hold on. I got it, Chris. You keep throwing while we have this school with us. What happened? He bit it off, bit off the popper. Well, that's part of the game with the bluefish. Should have had some wire on there probably, but it's always a, a damned if you do, damned if you don't with the wire. Sometimes you think you get more bites when you're fishing the fluorocarbon than you would with just the wire. But Chris, do you want to throw this popper? I'm going to rig up a fly rod and let's, let's try to do this bait and switch action here. So I like when I'm tying on top waters, really any lure lately, I like these 
a loop knot. Loop knot's gonna give it kind of a little pivot point there, adds a little action to it. This is called a non-slip mono loop, very easy knot to tie and uh, very strong knot. So I use it for albies, use it for stripers, bluefish, use it for plugs, flies, soft plastics, jigs. The bait and switch is a fly fishing technique whereby one angler casts a topwater lure on a spinning rod while the other waits at the ready with a fly rod. The idea is that the lure draws the fish into fly casting range, which in my particular case is pretty close to the boat. Now usually, the topwater lure used in the bait and switch has the hooks removed, but when your fishing partner, coming off a long and fishless winter, doesn't want to surrender his own chances at catching, you try to understand. Oh yeah, boys! Ho oh, ho! He came up and smoke all owned it right there. Jimmy, there was two behind him too. Oh, he's a hog. I'm not. What I'm not going to do. One of the things I'm not going to do is horse this fish. I think we've all seen what that happened. What happens when you're horsing fish? A lot of trash talk when he's not in the boat yet. Oh, look at the size of these blues. There's some big blues out here. Chris, let me know when you're ready for me. He is not close to ready. He is just having his way right now. Oh, whoa, man, that is a slammer, Chris. Jimmy, we're gonna wanna get him in sooner rather than later. Okay, here I come. I'm gonna walk him right over your shoulder. Watch okay. those hooks. I'll walk him to you. Yep. Hold on, Jimmy, he's not done yet. He's got one more jump. <laughs> Oh, yes, I can. Here we go. All right. Careful, Whoa. Jimmy, careful. Big greaser blues. Jimmy, that was a hell of a landing. That's, yeah, we crimped the barbs on these, so should be no issue getting oh, these hooks out. I'm just readying this other uh, fly rod. Get my tailing loop knot out of it. Last time, I'm finishing off my leader with a little, with a thicker 40 pound test tippet, which is gonna give me some bite protection against the bluefish. Not as much as wire, but it is a little bit stealthier. And like I said, these fish can be a little bit picky out here on the shallow water, although they haven't been too picky today. But they can be a little pickier, and sometimes going with a fluoro leader will give you a little bit more of a chance of getting a bite. I'm just doing a simple uni to uni knot. The whole idea of a fly fishing leader is a lot of times guys will taper it down. They'll start with a heavier line and go down to a lighter line. And the idea is that's what unfurls to present your fly in a better way. So that's why you have the tapered fly leader. So if you build them yourself, you might go 40, uh, 40, 30, 20, and then you're tipping. You know, in this case, I've got a tapered leader, probably starts 40 to 30, it's tapered down to about 15. And then I've got a small section of 40 pound test that's the bite tippet gonna give me protection from the bluefish from biting me off. I'd rather have wire, but that's gonna have, this is gonna to have to suffice for now. And I think I can kind of approximate what wire would do by using a long shank hook, a fly with a long shank hook, to make it less likely that the fish is gonna to totally engulf it. Bluefish have a well-earned reputation as violent eating machines. At times, they'll savagely attack any prey that moves into their field of vision. But when bluefish move on to shallow, sandy flats, like the one Chris and I are drifting off Cape Cod South Side, they behave more like tarpon, slowly swimming in single file and following, but ultimately refusing, lures and flies. It can be frustrating, but it also gives you a greater appreciation of this enigmatic game fish. Oh yeah. Oh boy, bring them in quick. I'm going to get ready to fly cast to them. I'm going to leave them in there. No, no, you fight them. He, no, but I'm, I'm going to fight them, but I'm just, you know, let's, because I guarantee you there's going to be one behind them, Jimmy. Oh, oh, man. Since we moved out here, Chris, it's three drifts, three blue fish hitting He's the top. He's coming right at me, and there's a fish right behind him. There's two on him, Jimmy. Get the fly rod ready right now. There's two on him, Jimmy. They're, they're literally swimming right behind Three. There's three of them. You see them right below him? I'm leaving them right there. Jimmy, he's right here. There was two right behind him and they're still there. Oh, he's trying to shake it. And he did. Did he? That's okay. I just I flipped the bail there, Jimmy. I'm gonna go ahead and cast. We're gonna try to do a little bait and switch. It's tough throwing with a little bit of a southwest wind as far as we want.
So these fish have to be cruising kind of all over the place in here. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's not like there's a ton of current or structure to concentrate them, so they just kind of roam in packs, eating whatever they can, they can find right now. Yeah, the whole idea of the bait and switch is the, uh, the plug, the popper here, it's drawing the bluefish into my fly casting range. Then if we were doing a true bait and switch and that had no hooks on it, the second those bluefish uh, were, were blasting it, coming into casting range, Chris would rip it out of the way and I would drop the fly right where the popper had been, kind of replacing it. It takes a level of coordination, but uh, it's, it's a way to kind of cheat to get these fish on the fly rod. As the sun got higher, we were better able to see through the water, and we saw how many bluefish that we weren't catching. Oh, God, terrible. Yeah, there's a whole school of them waking. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Chris, mind if I? Yep, go. They're, you can see their tails. I'm sorry, guys. They're definitely get... out deeper. Oh, it's all right. I'm gonna get them in, Jimmy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Yep, they're still going. You can just see their wake. So cool. Let's see. Oh, oh, start popping that. No, oh, they're turning. There's one behind it. Oh, they're yeah. so they're still going. They're still going. Let me just. Uh, How far, Jimmy? Go, go, straight, go. Straight. Right off the stern. Yeah. No, no. Right off the. Yeah, I could see they're. Oh my God, they're coming right at the boat. Take your time, Jimmy. Slow it down. Come on, eat it, eat it. He's gonna eat it. He's gonna, he's gonna eat it, Jimmy. He's gonna eat it. He's gonna eat it. He's gonna eat it. Oh, <laughs> come on. He's still gonna eat it. He's still gonna eat it. That's a 10 pound bluefish, man. Oh my God. Jimmy, if I can hook one up here. He was right on it. That's so cool. But Chris, see, they're just cruising out here. That one school went completely past. Then we had another one kind of veering toward the boat, almost like they were curious about it. Oh man, I really, he, <laughs> he kept coming. It's funny, now that we gotta look at them, I'm seeing them everywhere, even though they're, you know, that once you see them, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh, there's one, there's one, you know, it's just tips of waves. You get so excited. Everything looks like a bluefish now. Oh yeah, there's one behind it, there's one behind it. Get, get that fly right there. There you go, strip, strip, fast, fast, fast. He's right, he's, he's right there. He'll, he, he might see it, he might turn and see it. I just saw the thing. He was. He was right there, Jimmy. He was Jimmy. right on the plug. All right, get out there. Get back out there, Jimbo. This thing's a rocket ship, Jimbo. It's a lone wolf. Oh, it's a great rod, man. Yeah, he didn't swirl on it until it came close. And then uh, yeah, you can just see his, uh, see the, you know, kind of the purple back tracking the plug. Did you see it? Yeah. That was pretty cool. That fish was hot, was hot man. He, he charged, he hit the plug once. But by the time your, your fly landed right where he hit the plug, but by then he'd already, he was three, four feet in front of it. He never saw the fly. So they do this down on Long Island and I've heard people describe it almost like what tarpon do. They call it daisy chaining where the bluefish are almost nose to tail. And it's not a spawning behavior because bluefish spawn offshore. So I don't know if it's just what they do after they've eaten their fill and they're digesting or that's what they do when they're moving between spots. But they do have that killer instinct that you can sometimes trigger it. Grass is looking greener on the other side of the channel there, Chris. The blues are looking bluer. Let's make a run. Let's head that way. All right, I am, I, I like that move. There was a big blue there that went by. And every once in a while, you'd see the tail break the surface of them. You know, just that top fork. The very first cast we made is just about where those fish were. We just blew, we got them here. They're here, here. I think this is like right in their lane. I, there was another school right there. So literally, I just stopped where you made the first cast. There they are. There they are. Tails right in front of us. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm tied, Jimmy. I'm going to get out of your way. That's okay. No, no, no. They're right. They're, look, they're 10 feet off. You can just see them milling. They're, they're coming right at it, Jimmy. They're right there. Just, just drop that in. They're here. They're here. Jimmy, they're coming in on me. Oh, yeah. There we go. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Oh. 
That was so cool. Jimmy, I'm tight, so I'm gonna keep this guy on and just go right off of him. I'm looking at blues everywhere right now. We're in about four feet of water and this fish is just sitting on the bottom. Okay. They're tailing, they're tailing. This is so cool. He's, he's, he's on it, Jimmy, he's on it. We're gonna double up. Oh yeah! Here he is, Jimmy! All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at this guy right here. Can't even call that the bait and switch. He's off, he's off. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, this is incredible. This oh. is incredible. Oh my God, look at him over there. Look at the size of this greaser. Okay. Easy, fella. So what we're doing is, is there are just schools in shallow, about four feet of water right now. And these schools are just cruising around, tailing. So I buttoned this guy a little further off. And uh, these fish came right in, they were real curious, but Jimmy picked off his own school and, uh, and you know, nailed one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this fish back to the office. One of the guys in the office, Kevin Plinkoff, does an incredible bluefish pate, smoked bluefish pate. It is to die for during beer 30 on Friday. We're gonna put him in a five gallon buck with a little bit of ice and some salt water, make a slurry. By the time this fish gets to Kevin with the fillets, it's gonna be delicious. It's a big bluefish, Chris. I did a little bit of a trout set on that one, and that is in fly fishing parlance. That's where you lift the rod as if you were trout fishing. With, with trout and freshwater fish, to set the hook, you can just lift the rod, you'll be okay. With saltwater fish, you've got tougher mouths, bigger flies, so you wanna do what's called a strip set. It is part of the trickiness of fly fishing, is it's, it's definitely harder, and that's the point, is it's a little more challenging, the fight's a little more fun and exciting, but I mean, deep down, I still want to catch, still want to catch some fish. Oh, oh my God. As soon as you started ripping that in, Chris, he came out, out like a bat out of hell after it. Oh. There was one there. You see him? Yeah, he's right he's behind. He's still there, Jimmy. He got it. Oh, he swiped at it, Jimmy. He gave it a good look. He gave it a good hard look. There you got him, Jimmy. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Whoa, man, why won't they eat? There he is. Oh, Chris is on. Oh, look at him go. Oh. Wow, he's in so shallow right now that he can't go anywhere. He, look at him on the surface, Jimmy. He is just hanging there. That's a big blue. He's just like, I'm not coming to you, you come to me. <laughs> So Jimmy had a crack at these fish and they just kind of moved a little bit out of, out of range. So I threw the game on right over the top of him. He turned and exploded on it. And I'm trying to bring this fish in close enough because guaranteed there's two or three fish next to this guy. And if I can get him in close enough, Jimmy's got a real good crack of throwing one right behind him. Look at the way he's coming in. He's just swimming with the current. You, you land that fish. We'll get some more shots. If that doesn't happen, I will go get it. I'm about 10 more refusals away from picking up the spinning rod. Ah, maybe five more. This guy is just that second hook must have come around or I button him in the row on the just in the corner. But I tell you what, he is just turning sideways, Jimmy. He's just swimming with us. And every time he sees the boat, yeah, there he is. Look at the size of these blue fish in here. Jimmy, can you imagine getting that guy on a fly rod? <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet I can't. Gorgeous blue Beautiful fish, Chris. Fish. Look at those teeth on them. Oh, for the love of God, eat it. Why won't you eat it? 
Let's go Clouser Minnow. It's an olive over white Clouser Minnow. This is like the bucktail jig of the fly world. It's ah. a staple of a saltwater fly, especially this olive over white pattern that looks like sand eels. Eat it! There we go, there we go. Clouser Minnow, tight. <gasps> We go. Oh, I'm trying to keep it tight. Get, make sure that hook's in there. <laughs> well, I think we found out it was just maybe the fly. <laughs> so this is an eight weight fly rod, which is perfect for that kind of small to medium sized fish, good schoolie rod, good bluefish rod. If we were casting from the surf to fish like this, I'd probably want a nine or a 10 weight. This seems to be handling this fish perfectly. But the end game's gonna be the tricky part. I think it's just about finished. This will be easily my biggest bluefish on the fly, but it was a Look little bar. Look at that bar. fish, Jimmy. How awesome is that? You need help on the end game? I'm not gonna say no to that, Chris. Oh, first, oh, look at that. Oh. Beautiful bluefish on the fly, man. What a great fight on this uh, eight wake year. Jimmy, that was awesome. You go back to the old trusted, you know, clouser. Little clouser minnow right in the corner of the mouth there. And uh, little perfect. sand eel pattern. Yeah, that's what they, and Chris, it wasn't like just one ate it. I missed, I missed a good three or four. It was pretty painful for a second there. A single six pound bluefish might not be cause for celebration in most fishing circles, but after a day of bite offs, refusals and lost fish, it felt damn good to upgrade that personal best bluefish on the fly while leaving plenty of room to do it again next season. For as long as man has hunted and fished, friends and family have gathered around the fire or in this case, a bowl of Kevin Blinkoff smoked bluefish dip, to share in the bounty, tell stories, and plan the next hunt, with a little good-natured ribbing thrown in to keep everyone's egos in check. Oh! It's like your first time ever having hot pepper. sauce? And that's the ghost pepper, pepper, too. It's <laughs> not hot at all. Kevin, that's a Clean the emperor's feet. <laughs> to a good day of blue fishing. <sighs> yeah, was that a slow-mo? Yeah, no. <laughs> the, the camera does a slow-mo. Oh, we don't have to do it.